These are five common SQL mistakes that nobody is talking about. So without wasting any time, let's start the tutorial. Mistake number one, incorrect use of null. Null represents the absence of a value or unknown data in a database. It is not the same as empty string or zero. In simple terms, it means that the value is missing or undefined. For example, I have a table named example underscore table with four rows of data. As you can see, there are a lot of null values in this data. Let's explore some common SQL mistakes and see how we can avoid them. First, checking for null values. We usually use the equal to operator to check for null values like this. If we run this query, no rows will be returned. Let's execute. As you can see, nothing has been returned. Does this mean we don't have any null values in the discount column? No. To check for null values, we should use the is null logical operator instead of equal to operator like this. Simply replace the equal to sign with the is null operator. That's it. Let's execute this query. And now you can see we have two rows where the value for the discount column is null. Handling null in aggregate function. As mentioned earlier, null is neither an empty string nor zero. So we need to handle it carefully with aggregate functions. So for example, consider this query. The result shows that the sum of sales underscore amount is 450, while the average of commission is 7.5. This result is inaccurate because we did not handle null values properly here. For instance, there are four entries and among those, there are two entries for commission 10 and 15. If we calculate the average, it should be 3.75. But here, it is showing 7.5. This happens because null entries are ignored in the calculation. Therefore, we need to be careful with how we handle null values. Here is how to deal with null values while using aggregate functions. In this query, the callzack function returns the first known null value, which will be the value stored in the column, or zero if the value is null. Let's execute this query. And now you can see we got the correct answer. Similarly, there are many other examples. Comment if you want me to do a separate video on how to handle null properly. Meanwhile, let's jump to the next mistake. Mistake number two, incorrect use of distinct keyword. We use the distinct keyword to find the unique values stored in a column, but sometimes it yields inaccurate results. Let's take an example. Here, I have a table named EMP01 with data for five employees. Among these five employees, the name John appears twice. However, both entries are unique in their own way. John has two job titles, tester and developer. If we use distinct on the first name, we won't be able to uncover this detail. So, a proper investigation is required before using distinct keyword. First, find out which entries are duplicates using the group by clause. This will show the duplicate entries. Next, examine which other columns the duplicate entries depend on. In our case, it's the job underscore title. Let's check the job titles and see how many job titles are mapped against each first name. When we execute this, we see that the name John is associated with two job titles. This way, we get the distinct first names and clearer picture of why the names is repeating. It helps to determine if it's really a duplicate or if it's the same John with different job titles or possibly two different Johns. Using distinct can be slow for large data sets because it needs to sort and remove duplicates. On the other hand, group by can be more efficient if you need to aggregate data. And it's also clearer in terms of intent. Overusing distinct is a common SQL mistake that can mask underlying data issues and lead to inefficient queries. You can write more efficient and meaningful SQL queries by understanding the root cause of duplicates and using group by for aggregation or data cleanup. Let's move on to the next mistake. Mistake number three, not handling errors. Suppose we are updating data into a table. Let's say if the first update statement succeeds, but the second update statement fails. The data is left in an inconsistent state. There is no mechanism to roll back the changes if an error occurs. 
Therefore, we should handle error properly. Here, if any error occurs, now it will be handled and transaction will be rolled back to the save point. This is a dummy structure of error handling. I have done a video on error handling in Oracle database. You can find its link in the description or in the i button on your screen. Mistake number 4. Failing to normalize data. Here we have a table definition. Can you guess what's wrong here? This is a denormalized table. It has employee related attributes as well as department related attributes. When creating this table, the first problem is redundancy. The department underscore name is repeated for every employee in the same department. This redundancy can lead to inconsistent data and will consume a lot of storage. The second problem is update anomalies. For example, if your table has millions of entries and your company decides to change the department name from HR to human resources, this update requires modifying a huge number of rules, which consumes resources and is error prone. Next are insertion anomalies. For example, if your company decides to add a new department named AI but hasn't hired anyone for it yet, you cannot insert that department data into this table. To create a new department, you need data for other columns first. For example, to add the department name AI to this table, you need to enter an employee ID because it's a primary key. But since no one has been hired yet, you cannot add an employee ID. Similarly, there are deletion anomalies. Suppose there were 5 employees in the HR department and 4 have already left the company. If the 5th one also decides to leave and you delete their record, the data for the HR department will also be deleted, losing the department record along with the employee records. The solution is to normalize the table. Simply create two tables. One for employee data and another for department data. If you want a dedicated tutorial on normalization, comment and let me know. This is one of the most common mistakes people make. While it might seem convenient, it can lead to inefficiency and other issues, especially in large systems. Retrieving all columns can be inefficient, especially if the table has many columns and only a few are needed. If the table has many columns, you might be transferring a lot of unnecessary data, which can slow down the query. The database needs to read more data from disk, increasing input-output operations. The best approach is to retrieve only the necessary data and use the WHERE clause to filter the data you need. This will decrease the load on the database by reducing the amount of data fetched from the disk. The benefits of not using SELECT as strict are It immediately clear which columns are being used. Second, only the needed data is retrieved, improving performance. These are 5 common SQL mistakes people make. In this tutorial, I have not touched on the topic of indexes because that requires an entire video. I will cover that soon. That's it for this tutorial. Make sure to subscribe to catch the next interesting topic. Thanks for watching. This is Manish from rebellionrider.com.